So today I am going to cover the without wasting the time immune signatures in PBC and autoimmune hepatitis. Actually topic is variant syndromes of PBC and autoimmune. I will cover the variant syndromes in the next slides but first I will cover the PBC and autoimmune hepatitis. As we know that just touching upon the immunity and the immune response from the beginning, so we all understand well. So the, from the bone, there is a pluripotent stem cells. It goes to the thymus. Actually, the immunity all mature in the thymus. And the naive T cells, they ingress from the thymus and then they see that they go to the lymph uh, node where they interact with the antigens which is displayed by the dendritic cells and the APCs and these naive T cells then get mature and they come back to the periphery and there is a clonal T cell proliferation. There is apoptosis of those T cells which have already seen the antigen and the, uh, then there is no need further for the proliferation of those T cells, but few T cells, they stay back as a memory T cell pool. So this is a just uh, homeostasis of the immune responses. It generally happens. However, I just want to touch upon this also because it is very important. When there is a APC and T T cell interactions so there you know everybody knows that the APC and T cell interact with the MHC class 1 and the class 2 but other than that there is a co-stimulatory signal which we say the signal 2 so those are the many things which have the B7.1 to B7.H which consider the CD80 28, 86, even PDL1 and the PD1, even the CTLA4, ICOS ligand. So this all co-stimulatory signals make the interaction with the T cell and then only there is a T cell activation, maturation, proliferation or damage or apoptosis. So I will go further. There is a central and peripheral tolerance. As I already told you that in the thymus and the bone marrow, when the precursor cells, they see the antigen, their immature lymphocyte, they see either they go to the deletion, apoptosis, this is a negative selection. Either in the B cell, they change the, their BCR, repertoire of the BCR is changed because they need to change in, in response to the antigen and there is a BCR editing there or they develop the regulatory T cells. This is a very important component which I am going to talk again and again in the autoimmunity. And then these regulatory T cells, they come to the peripheral and otherwise those immature uh, lymphocytes, they come as immature. Again, they see the self-antigen because negative selection is happening in the thymus but not the complete negative selection happens and that's the reason self-antigen uh, induced lymphocytes are breaching into the periphery and there is again the system in the periphery which will cut down those breach and that's the reason those lymphocytes become energic or apoptosis or T-Rex are main player in the periphery which are suppressing and there will be the suppression of the T-cells. So T-cell tolerance is negative selection and development of regulatory T-cell which comes to the periphery. How these peripheral tolerance is regulated? Deleted, receptor edited, these I told you again already. Intrinsic regulation, because there is a receptor where the self-antigen is binding and there is a, there is a intrinsic uh, inhibition that BCR and the TCR should be endocytos. In, instead of the appear on the surface, there should be the endocytos or extrinsically regulated whether there is a IL-7 or BEFAR, those limits the TCR or the PCR. So in this way, self-antigen is also uh, limited. So what is the CLDs? You everybody knows and I don't need to tell but I just am emphasizing these that autoimmune and the PBC both are histologically characterized by the lymphocytic infiltrates which already Dr. Shwetank also told that surrounds the bile ducts and are composed comprised mostly of the T lymphocytes. PBC have the autoantigens, but PSC even not much uh, read about it, and these autoantigens target the humoral and cellular components. Now the question is, what kind of the T cells infiltration or lymphocyte infiltration is there? 
Generally, what happened that the uh, self antigen is uh, uh, with the APC, it is presented to the Th0, which is uncommitted T cells. This uncommitted T cells become either Th1 or the Th2. Th1, under the influence of IL-2 and interferon gamma, they interact with the macrophage, or they become the CTLs and then go to the hepatocyte. It's a damage in the liver. Main damage is caused by the Th2 cells, which is the CD4 cells. They start increase the IL-4, IL-10, and IL-13 and give the B cell maturation. Now, B cells are not making the antibodies alone. They are making the auto antibodies, which target the NK, and NK cells are now presenting to the hepatocyte, and hepatocyte damage is there. So, there is an autoimmune attack in the hepatocytes. I have taken this slide into the, from the Vikrant paper that there is a pediatric autoimmune liver disorders also where autoimmune hepatitis and autoimmune sclerosing cholangitis patients they have taken. So it is very important, not in the adult, even the pediatric autoimmunity, we will also check it. So what are the cellular components? I just made this uh, slide that with the reference that the, if you just see CD4 T cells are increased, which are the TH2 cells. Th1, CD4, T cells in the liver, they don't know, but uh, sorry, in the periphery, they don't know, but the, in the liver, there is data that is increased. Even CD4, 25, FOXP3, CD4, 25 alone, and FOXP3 alone. FOXP3 is the marker for the regulatory T cells. I told you, instead, they are increased in CD4, but the C FOXP3 and T-Rex were decrease. That's the reason autoimmunity is more prevalent and even the CDA T cell, gamma delta T cells were increased. So I will just focus that here if you see that a regulatory T cell which is 25 positive and FOXP3 in the periphery it was decreased and there was no data till now in the liver. But it is supposed that in the autoimmunity, regulatory T cells are decreased, similar with the primary biliary cirrhosis. Now here the problem is more. Cholangiocyte itself become as act as an APC because they have the CD40, CD80, which are the co-stimulations markers, HLA-2 expression is more, and then with these kind of co-stimulation, they interact mainly with the T cells, which become the T factor, T cytotoxics, TH2, TH17, producing the IL-17. And on top of that, these cholangiocytes uh, respond to the IL-6, IL-8, and MCP1 and become the more activation and the immune activation because they become itself as an APC. Hepatocyte also become in the disease act as an APC, but cholangiocyte ratio is more. In this slide also, if you see, that there was the regulatory T cell attack was inhibition was low. So in PBC and the AIH, AI, uh, regulatory T cells are low. So as I told you, cellular compartments that the FOXP3 is low. What is the FOXP3? FOXP3 has the N-terminal repressor. Yeah, zinc finger, and leucine chipper, FKH also, and the, in this FOXP3, this is regulated by epigenetic modification, FOXP3 expression, transcriptional regulator, even post-transcription methylation and the regulation FOXP3. And now this FOXP3 either inhibit the CD4 T effector cells, APC. But if there is a FOXP3 uh, loss, there is a autoimmunity, even which is in the IPEX and immune tolerance, basically more of the autoimmunity. So therefore, the transcription factor for had FOXP3 is important. Protein contributes to the activation, differentiation of CD425 regulatory T cell lymphocytes. So we generally find that T Rex are 25 positive. No, FOXP3 is very important, which gives the activation to this FOXP3. So <coughs> because you know that regulatory T cells are generally T cells, they have the stimulation with the CD28, and they have the inhibition also. So T Rex are more potent when there is an inhibition of CTLA4, means CTLA4 inhibitory molecule is more present on the T Rex, and that's the reason those T Rex are more potent. If you see, 
in the APC when the affinity of CTLA-4 is more, then only T-Rex are more potent. What does this CTLA-4? CTLA-4 main work is that it has a more affinity towards the CD28 or AT6. What they do, they go to the APC, they just endocytose the CD28 and AT and AT6, which is a co-stimulation molecule, and then they just uh, this lies this uh, CD86, and the CTLA4 again will come back to the surface. It means when there is a no co-stimulation molecule, there won't be the, any immune activation in the T cells. So CTLA-4 is basically player on the T-Rex, which inhibits the T cell activation. So now this was the basic. I will go back to the now papers. In one of the case study, this was the Korean girl. They have seen that this Korean girl started from the, until three years, if she was having the chronic diarrhea then autoimmune enteropathy, then megoplastic anemia. Till 14 years, she was suffering, suffering, suffering. What they did, they just, just saw the genetic makeup of that girl, and they have seen that this CTLA-4 was deleted. De novo, CTLA-4 deletion was there. But this CTLA-4 is a, you know, that ligand binding motif, and this ligand binding motif is with the, uh, there was the, on the T-Rex. So what they did, then they'd given the abet uh, I'm not able to pronounce the drug that they did the CTLA-4, which is being done, given in the, for the uh, tumors also. And the, when they have given the CTLA-4 antibodies, that girl after the 14 years, it, uh, she lived in the hospital for three years continuous, and she survived, and she was nice. So they have uh, given the proof of concept that CTLA-4 de novo homolysis of CTLA-4 is giving the autoimmunity in these cells. Whether the only T-Rex are important or other differentiation of CD4 T cell. This is a immune homeostasis, immune deficiency, immune homeostasis. When the antigen level is very low, but when antigen level is very high, CD4 T cells are proliferating, as I told you. This becomes the TFH precursor and TFH. TFH will secrete the IL-21, and IL-21 is making the B cell potent, which is making the more and more of R2 antibodies. So who are the main player then? Other than T-Rex, TFH precursor and TFH cells are the main player for the autoimmunity. So my whole talk is now again going to talk about this. This is a Hepatology Communication 2018 paper. They took the PBC, PSC, and the healthy donors. They have seen that the CD4 T cells were significantly increased. Then they have seen the TH2 population, which was in the PBC was low, but in the PSC it was high. And again the TH17, and the TFH population was more. So they have seen the TFH. So follicular helper TFH cells are distinct subset of cluster of differentiation CD4 T cell that are central facilitator for humoral autoimmunity or for humoral immunity, which makes the autoantibodies. So, so what happened in the normal homeostasis, there is a IL-2 which inhibits the T cell. But in autoimmune diseases, as Dr. Shwek Tang said, many SNPs are there. These SNPs on the IL-2-RA, these on the IL-2-RB. IL-2 is the main uh, uh, thing which is makes the T-Rex energic. So there is a SNPs which cause the autoimmunity and makes the more of the TFH cell with the PD-1 expression, ICOS expression, CXCR5 expression. So what the, the, and these become the pathogenic TFH cells. So in this paper, what they did, they altered the TFH cell subsets and they see whether the pathogenic. So in the PBC, you can see there was the more of the CXCR5 PD-1 positive CD4 TFH cells. And then they have seen that the, these uh, PTF cells have the expression of CXCR3, which becomes the pathogenic TFH, and it was increased in the PBC, and CXCR3 negative was decreased in the PBC. So TFH with the uh, CXCR3 pathogenic TFH was more in the PBC and the 
less in the PSC. So the next, the, they, they have seen the TFH cell activation in the PBC. Uh, activation is through the ICOS, which is a co-stimulatory molecules, and they have seen that the, in the PBC there was a strange increase, but in the PSC it was the decrease. Especially ICOS positive TFH cells were increased in the PBC again, and uh, there was a marker of OX40, which is another co-stimulant, uh, co-stimulatory marker, which was also increased in the PBC. I have less time, so I'm rushing fast. So autoantibodies and the immunoglobulins and their correlation of to TFH cell in the PBC. They did the AMAM2 correlation with the PBC. They did with the IgM, IgG, and they have seen the R2 was even less, which uh, 0 0.3. 0.24, but they were having the with the strong correlation, more TFH, more are the antimicrobial, anti-mitochondrial, uh, uh, anti and autoantibodies with this. <coughs> and they have also correlated these TF cells with the disease severity. The patients with, with has that the disease severity that the PBC, because there was the three, it, it is the fibrosis score and the fibrosis score was more and uh, TFH was correlated with the uh, disease activity also. Further, they have seen the frequency of regulatory follicular T helper cells. You know very well that the CD25 is the, they say, so CD25 negative in the lymphoid, CD25 low in the circulation, but it should be FOXP3 positive, CXCR5 positive, PD1 positive, CD4, and then they have seen that regulatory follicular helper T cells was more in the PBC than the, and that there was a ratio of the TFH and the uh, TFH regulatory cells was decreased in this thing. Then they have seen, which Dr. Shwetahak has already shown you, that there was more of the interferon gamma, there are more of the IL-21 and IL-17. TFH cells generally produce the IL-21, which is the main culprit for the uh, TFH activation. So, now the question comes where the madam gave me the topic that the PBC and AIH variant syndrome. There are only 5 to 20 percent variants of the patients which belong either to the PBC, either to the AIH, or the both of the symptoms are there. And this paper has come into the hepatology 2023 where people have seen the immune signature in variant syndromes of PBC and autoimmune hepatitis. What this did, this group is very well uh, established. Actually, I have read the several papers of it. And in initially, what they did, in the only in AIH, they did the T cell receptor beta chain immune sequencing and IgH sequencing also. From there, they found the few signature, which was very prevalent for the AIH. Then what they did in this uh, study, they took the uh, cl uh, classical AIH 29 patient, classical PBC 31 patient, and variant syndromes of AIH or PBC 28. And then they did the next generation sequencing of Im and immunosequencing data analysis of again they repeated the TRB which is a T cell receptor beta chain and IGH. Now you will ask me why they did only the receptor because TCR is alpha beta. So why they did the beta? Because beta is the more diversified and they have the more hyper variable regions which makes the T cells TCR different and which can cover the maximum of the, of the antigens and similar it happens to the IgH heavy chain of the B cells, <coughs> B cell receptor. So they did the sequencing and then they found they took the vari uh, uh, variant syndrome, AIH, PBC, and the healthy donors. They did not find any that the, this is a uh, IgH, or oh, sorry, sorry. This is the IgH and this is TRB, means T cell receptor beta chain. They didn't find any difference between the, all the group, even 0.173. There was no significant change they have seen. But because, because they have not seen any significant change in the TRB and IgH with the vari uh, variant syndrome, what they did, they just from those sequencing pattern, they took the 
30 uh, cytokines and the growth factors and the uh, inhibitory molecules. These cytokines cover the 4, 5, 2, IL-17, IL-10 and BEFAR as all the inhibitory molecules, PD-1, CTLA-4, LAG-3, CD-25, they all covered. And then they have covered all these uh, four patient group and saw that is there any difference and all 28 samples from patients with variant syndrome clustered either together with the AIH. These were 28, 20 out, 28 uh, they were with the AIH and 8 with the PBC. So either they clustered with the AIH or the PBC and the main topic they, they have seen that AIH patients with the CBR because then those 28, 29 patients which had the complete biochemical response and no response, then they have shown that out, uh, out of these, only these uh, uh, soluble CD25, soluble LAG3, soluble AT6, soluble DIM3 and TNF was making in the IR and the CBR. They did not see any difference between the variant syndromes. I will go to the next slide. In fact, they have shown that the sol soluble TIM3 was in the complete biochemical response, it was decreased, but in the no response or the uh, less response that was increased. Why I covered the more uh, soluble TIM3? Because another group, they have published in the PLOS one, and they have taken in the chronic hepatitis C, PBC, and AIH, and in AIH, the soluble TIM3 was the really increased marker. In fact, they have correlated soluble TIM3 with the ALT and the total bilirubin. ALT was increased, soluble TIM3 was also increased. They have further uh, uh, correlated the soluble TIM3 with the platelets and the albumin, and when the both are decreased, when the soluble TIM3 was increased, they have further uh, correlated with the M2BPG1. M2BPG1 is the classical marker for the fibrosis. People have used for the HBV, HCV, autoimmune hepatitis. This is a macrophage binding protein, so they have seen that the soluble soluble TIM3 was increased and it's a positively correlation, R2 is very nice, and 0 0.69. And uh, this, uh, again, M2 BPGI and the PT was uh, down-regulated with the PT and the total albumin. I will come back to the, my another slides, and it was also correlated with the soluble TIM3 with the increased PT, and it increased when there is F0, F2, and F3, F4. So all this uh, soluble TIM3 was strongly correlated with the autoimmune hepatitis especially. So what they did that the, with the liver fibrosis also with the F0, F2 there was more and F3, F4 there was, but there was not much significant difference they have shown. So you can see that the soluble TIM3 is a good marker for the AIH. Only from the sequencing data they have found this. So now this is again hepatology paper diagram. If you can see this is a very busy and what you can see there is a this block in AIH which has the I can read it from here IL-17 and all the soluble CD25 soluble CD24 Nirupma you'll have to wind yes, up yes yes wind up so they have <laughs> madam summary clear evidence that variant syndrome showed the uh, immune genotopic overlaps between AIH and PBC majority of VS patients had AIH like signatures AIH like immunotype more important inflammatory cytokines, but along with that, the soluble CD25, LAC3, CD2086, TIM3 may represent important discriminators between AIH and PBC. Based on these immunological marker, patients with variant syndrome either cluster together with the AIH or PBC, but not with the healthy take home message, along with the inflammatory panel, clinicians should do the soluble CD25, LAG386, TIM3, and we are working on the soluble CD25 with Dr. Rakhi. We have soluble CD25 and soluble TIM3 in the lab running. If you, thank you so much. Thanks for your kind attention.